Hello MTV and welcome to my crib. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a more complex cloner than I created in my Essential Sops video. We're going to be using proper VEX this time. We're going to be learning how to orient uh, points to create a rotation in VEX. And it's going to be very fun. And in the next video after this, I'm going to be going more into depth into for loops and how to switch between the inputs to create like a, a random a random object effect onto these points. So we're going to be copying like multiple objects to to the points like you can do in cinema. So first off, let's start with a box. I'm just going to be doing a points from volume in here and turn this up a bit. And let's do our copy to points now. There's three different ways to do this. Um, we can do copy transform, which is essentially like linear mode inside of cinema. It will just transform an object every, uh, every copy. Then we have copy stamping, which is sort of outdated and quite slow, but um, we can do all the stuff that we can do here inside of either vex on the points or uh, inside of a for loop with um, some interesting stuff that uh, I'll show you next video. But as you know by now, or should do, the copy to points requires your points in the second input and then your object in the first. I'm going to be using a box so we can tell that we're rotating stuff. Tell the spheres, I apologize. So we're copying stuff to points as you'd expect. Maybe I'll reduce this number of points and that should be good for the minute and now I'm going to be showing you how to affect these points in VEX with your point wrangle so drop that on the wire so this one is going to be position I'm going to be doing for each individual for each individual transform option there's going to be a new wrangle so the first one is position so at P which is a vector um, if you don't know about data types and attributes, go check out my VEX tutorial and that should get you up to speed with this sort of stuff. But we're going to be setting at P to, uh, I don't know, let's do some random stuff first. So at P and then we'll do for each axis, we'll do a float called rand. So we'll do float rand X or we could do RX or should it be TX, I guess, because it's transform X. So float tx equals, um, let's do a fit01. A fit01 assumes that the input source um, is 01, and then we're going to be remapping to whatever we want. So let's do uh, rand at point number. So this is going to be randomizing our point number between 0 and 1. And then we're going to be fitting this. So this is our minimum. So we're going to be doing a float channel. Or you, to be completely sure that's a float channel, you can do chf, but channel will work fine. It just assumes that the channel is going to be a float. And then in here we do tx, uh, or we do x min, I guess. Should be fine. And then we do x max. And close this. So we've opened here, and we've closed here. So that's our first, our first, um, that's our first attribute we've created. And like I said in my VEX tutorial, we're doing a non-permanent method of creating attributes. The only attribute that's going to be created or maintained, I guess, is position. And I'm going to copy this three times. So the reason I'm creating multiple of these is so I can make a random seed for each individual axis. So if I go in here and do like times 25, times 50, times 150, or do 75, so it's all on the same line, all justified very nicely. Then I'll also add some spaces in to help you guys read this. Uh, that should be good. And now what we do is we're going to set our position uh, to TX, TY, and TZ. So TX, TY, TZ, like that. And make sure you're closing out each line with a semicolon. And now we don't have an error. Very nice. And when we go over here, we're going to create our parameters. 
and there we have it some random position there you can change the ranges of these uh, sliders by going in here and doing actually I'm going to keep them on one but for the minimum values I'm going to do minus one and zero is the max sounds good And then what I'm going to be doing is doing copy parameter and then pasting like so. Oops. And then I'm going to be adding a subtraction to each of these uh, expressions. So we're going to get the opposite of whatever we put in these sliders. So. As you can see, it's adding on each direction, which is quite nice. Obviously, you can do this however you want, but that's the way I'm going to set mine up for the minute. And next up, we have uh, scale, which is probably the easiest of the three. Um, we can either use at p scale, which is a float value, or we can use at scale, which is a vector value. vector and then we have float so the scale value as a as I suggested earlier with calling it a vector um, we have three different options in here so we can scale this on TX TY or TZ that's how you would reference the floats but what we can also do is we could do a channel and then put in here our scale uh, and I'm doing CHV to create a vector uh, parameter. And now what I can do is scale these ununiformly on each axis. But what I want is a very simple random scale on uh, position uh, on the. But what I want is a random scale on each point. I don't want any sort of extra control. So I'm going to delete our parameter. And I'm going to put in here rand a point number again, and then we're going to fit this value. So maybe I'll just uh, cut that and then I'll paste it into a fit01 function. And then we'll do scale min and then scale max. Close that out. Create our parameters. And then we've got a random scale here, and we can even go in and add our seed. Like so. Maybe we times it. Uh, so that's our scale done, very easy. Um, you can also, if you were doing like scale, And now for the one that I don't know how to explain very well, which is orient or rotation. Now the method I'm going to be using is orient, which as far as I'm aware, uses the same method as the alternative method that I was thinking of for this video. It's going to be using a matrix, which is some thin in mass, which is some mass bullshit that I don't understand. So normally what I do is I will create some piece of code that I want to use and then I'll save it. So I'll go up here to the cogwheel and do save preset and call it like rotate. And then I can go back and create this code over and over again without having to type it out and remember how I did it. I'll also be leaving where I learned all this stuff in the description. So if you're a bit more competent in, uh, in math than me, then you can go and, you know, use this properly. But uh, I'm just going to be roughly explaining how this works. So the orient function is a vector that represents direction. And I'm reading that directly from the Houdini site, so it can't be wrong. Um, and, and what we need is we need, uh, first off, a vector uh, called to rotate. You could also do individual floats like I did in my other example that I'll leave in the description so you can copy it, which is creating a matrix. And then adding it all, or, uh, and then timesing the normal by that value. Um, the normal method 
you know, the one that's in the description is really useful uh, visually because you can look at the normal or, or uh, visualize the normals just by clicking over here. So you can kind of get an idea of where things are going to be facing. But this method I just find a little bit easier to understand. So our, our rotate, we're just going to be doing exactly what we did before. I might even just copy this code here. The only difference in this code is that we're going to be using CHV, not for our seed, but for our scale uh, values that are actually rotation values. So rotate min, rotate max. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add radians to the start of this. So we get it into degrees instead of it's quadrants or something. Quadrant, quadrant. So we get this into degrees now. And then we're just going to be setting orient, which is a vector. So we've got our vector value here equals that thing, which I believe is a unit that we're converting from here is our is uh, rotate. So now if I turn all this on, turn the range to 360, actually we'll do 180 each way. So now we can go and turn these up. Make sure you turn your seat up as well. And now we've got random rotation on whatever axis we want. Very nice. And if you don't want random, then you can obviously just do this <laughs> to be super lazy about it. Um, rotate. But yeah, that's essentially the way that I create cloners with full functionality of position, scale, and rotation. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to use for each loops to create some random uh, objects going into these points. So for example, you could have a, a, another box with a different scale on a certain axis, or you could have a sphere or whatever going into the same point network. So I'll see you then. Uh, any questions, don't ask me about this one. Uh, I'll try and answer.